With the highly anticipated release of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 on the horizon, I thought today we would break down a scene that is known to be one of the most iconic and one of the most recognizable scenes in the entire Mission Impossible franchise. Hell, maybe in all of movies, period. For fans of the Mission Impossible franchise, there is maybe no scene to better represent the intensity of these movies than the vault heist scene from the first one. Once again, if you don't know this scene, you've probably seen it parodied or spoofed somewhere else. And today we are gonna break down that scene and figure out why you and I love it so much. I'm Kier Gomes from Joe Blow Originals and you're watching Scene Breakdown. Mission Impossible is a 1996 spy action thriller based on a TV show of the same name. It's kind of nothing like the original TV show, but it has the same name and technically the same continuity. It stars the one and only Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt. He's a spy for an agency called IMF, the Impossible Missions Force, and after being suspected of some disloyalty and maybe a sprinkle of treason, Hunt needs to uncover the truth and clear his name. This movie was directed by the legendary Brian De Palma, who took on the project because he was a fan of the old TV show and wanted to do something more commercial than what he had done previously. Along with Tom Cruise, you also get Academy Award winner John Voight, who's actually one of two Oscar winners in this movie. And he plays a character named Jim Phelps, who is actually the only person who came from the TV show into this movie. In this scene in particular, you also get Jean Reno, who plays Krieger, and Ving Rhames, who plays Luther, and they're gonna help Ethan with this little vault heist. So for context, as always is the case in any kind of spy thriller from the 90s, Ethan has to get a floppy disk with some very important information on it. At this point in the scene, the heist has already started and the intensity is cranked to high. You have Krieger up in the vents helping hold Ethan by a cable so he can propel down into a vault and steal the information. Now this vault is hyper censored, something that even a sweat drop from your brow could set off. We've also got the hacker of the story, Luther, helping them out with making sure that he's got all eyes on everybody. This scene is pretty brilliant for a couple of different reasons and we are gonna break all of that down right now. Let's just get into it. This is probably one of the most you know, iconic scenes in this entire movie, maybe of the whole franchise. It's kind of a signature move. You'll, you'll know it when you see it. Uh-oh. I gotta say too, if you guys never noticed this before, you'll probably notice it now. The sound design in this scene is crazy. Like you can hear there's no music, so it really builds the intensity. But the switching perspectives from like where Krieger's at in the vents, the to Ethan in the vaults. Very cool. That's it right there. Now this is actually really interesting. Let me hit you guys with the first pause of the video. Uh, Tom Cruise recorded this scene. Supposedly they filmed this a bunch of times. They did a bunch of different takes. And what they really wanted was for Tom Cruise to just drop and be able to lay flat like he does. But what kept happening is he would be off balance, so when the fall would happen, he would keep smacking his face on the floor. And according to Tom Cruise, this scene almost didn't even go into the movie. So after multiple, multiple takes not being able to nail it, it almost wasn't going to work out. And then I guess Tom Cruise put some like loose change, like pennies, in his shoes to kind of help balance him out when he would fall and it ended up obviously looking really good and very intense like he almost hits his face and you really feel that in the scene and I just love that kind of lure you know behind something like this it's the same thing with the Ghostbusters episode we did where that scene with Stay Puft almost didn't go in the movie this scene this iconic scene almost didn't go in the movie so I love when it works out also look how good that cinematography Whew. The, uh, the design for the vault was also inspired, De Palma says it was inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey, which you can totally tell when you look at it. Listen to the sound design. It's so intense. <laughs> this poor dude. <laughs> oh. I love that bird's eye view shot too, it looks so good. Now, before Tom Cruise 
if you guys can even imagine anybody but Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, because I personally can't. But before it was Tom Cruise, this was 1996, okay? They considered George Clooney, who they outright offered the role to, but he turned it down. Uh, they also considered Nicolas Cage, John Travolta, even Mel Gibson was considered for this. Now, I think that all of those guys, I think Bruce Willis too, all those guys were in their prime at that time and they would have been great for this, but... It's so hard to imagine after everything we've been through with Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, it's so hard to imagine anybody but him playing that part. And now you know, it was almost George Clooney. <laughs> it must have been so hard to keep, I mean, I would imagine if you're in great shape, maybe not as hard, but to try to keep yourself balanced like that, you gotta be flexing your abs like as tight as you possibly can. That would explain all the sweat. <sighs> Krieger is sweating it. You can really feel the intensity here strictly because of the sound design and the lack of music. Now, it would have been easy to maybe put a swelling and intense score or something meandering to kind of build some suspense, but instead they relied on sound design and nothing else. So you get, of course, the you know, incredible visuals and you can see the sweat and you can see the 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 you know frolicking arms trying to stay balanced but what really sells it is that sound design it'll show krieger in the vent you'll hear that zzz, that hum then it'll cut back to ethan in the vault and it'll be dead silent and you won't hear anything things like that like even like the sound of the cable or the sound of the gloves against the cable they really help kind of create some anxiety you know the situation is so tense because you can sit there and sit with the sounds and the things that you see so i love the intensity here obviously brian de palma knows exactly what he's doing keep it going <sighs> you can see everybody but they are not out of the woods yet You know, picturing Tom Cruise, or picturing anybody else except for Tom Cruise in this movie is also strange. I gotta pause it one more time. Uh, because if you guys didn't know this either, Tom Cruise, as I'm sure most of you know, produces a lot of the movies he stars in, if not all of the movies he stars in. And uh, But before that was the case, he had a $20 million fee to star in a movie in 1996. He was a huge star, $20 million. So the budget for this movie would have been more than 50% dedicated to just him. So instead, he deferred his $20 million fee in exchange for box office percentage, which worked out really, really well for him, uh, but also for this movie. They saved a big chunk there. The budget originally for this movie was like between 40 and $50 million. But Tom Cruise wanted to have a big, huge, eye-catching sequence at the beginning of the movie, which would have taken almost the entire budget of the movie. But because of Tom Cruise and his idea, they were able to double the budget from 40 to 50 million to about 80 million dollars. And who knows what other star would have been able to do that. So we owe a lot to him for this movie. We really do. Four yards. One red. You know, they also did the, uh, the iconic <laughs> roof suspension uh, cable drop in Mission Impossible 2. They did it again in Mission Impossible 3. And I think Jeremy Renner does it in Ghost Protocol. I'm pretty sure. Toast. <laughs> Toast. <laughs> Miss, just when you're thinking you can relax. After all that, right, the intensity is full built. The slow motion also looks incredible. And they almost got away with it, too. See, this is why this movie is still praised for its action and suspense. Because even though this scene is not technically an action scene, there is so much drama and so much suspense trapped into this scene between the sound design, the visuals, just the entire situation. And by this point in the movie, you're no stranger to adrenaline. I mean, this movie really keeps you going. And uh, I think that that's part of it, you know? Like, this movie, for example, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt, doesn't even shoot a gun in this movie. Obviously, there's a gunfight in every other Mission Impossible movie. 
And this movie is praised a lot for its action and suspense, and I think that that really speaks to this. There's no gunfire, and yet it's being praised for the action and suspense of the movie. And it's because this scene is so dramatic and so intense. Also, there's two Oscar winners in this movie and two nominees. You know, John Voight's in this, and then Vanessa Redgrave. They're both Oscar winners. <laughs> the confusion. I think I have those glasses somewhere. <laughs> oh, and you've been hacked, son. All right, that's pretty much the scene. Man, I love that scene. It makes me sweat watching it, and I've seen it a hundred times. Now, of course, this movie is iconic for reasons beyond this one scene. Uh, I can even think of, in media, this movie is iconic because it was the last major studio film to be released to Betamax. Some people don't know that, and if you don't know what Betamax is, one, I'm old, and two, ask your parents. But also, obviously, this movie is fondly remembered as the first installment in one of the greatest movie franchises ever to hit the big screen. So let me know in the comments if you guys are excited for Dead Reckoning Part 1. Personally, I cannot wait. Also, let me know what your favorite Mission Impossible movie is and any other iconic scenes that you would love to see us break down here on the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye.